It's about time for another OTRS Central Q&A. I gave you a bonus one earlier this week. It's time for another one now. And based off of the response via both the OTRS Central Facebook and Twitter pages, this will be broken up into two parts. This year, part one deals with the Twitter questions. Part two will be the Facebook questions. Tweeted questions this time, they didn't get answered. It might just be more so just the sheer volume of questions. I'm not going to make every Q&A an hour and a half, two hours long. So sometimes I try to narrow down to the best ones. Don't take it personal. It is what it is. So let me go ahead and get started with this Twitter Q&A. The Facebook Q&A will follow up soon after. WWE961 asked, is Bret Hart the most boring wrestler personality-wise in the history of professional wrestling? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. May I introduce Adino Bravo and many, many others. Bret Hart wasn't my cup of tea. I personally thought he had very little personality, but as his career went along, I, a redeeming quality for him to me was always Team Canada in 97. So he's far from the most boring wrestler personality-wise that I have ever seen. That's just me. Uh, Daquan Hayes, one, two, three, four. What was the most disappointing WrestleMania you've ever seen? Um, I remember being very, very disappointed with WrestleMania 8 because it wasn't going to be Hogan versus Flair. That's one. Uh, WrestleMania 20 was a disappointment in part because that was, you know, Lesnar versus Goldberg, but then it had its redeeming qualities. Uh, in terms of the guys that were champions at the end of the night. Um, but in terms of recent examples, I look at both 25 and 26 as major disappointments to me. 25, because I was expecting this company to do better and execute better on an anniversary type of show. And then 26, to me, the card looked really good in theory. And I thought so many things could go so well, and then so many things just didn't go well until you got to the main event. Uh, so those would be two notable examples of really disappointing WrestleManias where my expectations were nowhere close to met. A. Wright Neebs asked, do you watch MMA? And if so, who are your favorite fighters? I do not watch MMA. I haven't watched it in a few years. I just really don't care. Uh, the one fighter I did like watching was John Bones Jones, but yeah. Moving on. <laughs> Chairman 015, which is the bigger deal? Is it beating Cena clean or beating Lesnar clean? Personally, I think the bigger deal is beating Cena clean. I mean, he has a decade of damn near not losing to anybody fucking clean. You know, whereas Lesnar's lost to people clean. And I just don't think it's as big of a deal, even with the monster treatment Lesnar gets. It means a lot more to beat John Cena clean. Because you could talk about the special attraction element to Lesnar and this and that and the leg legitimacy of him. But from a WWE standpoint, nobody, and I emphasize again, nobody is more legitimate in their eyes than John Cena. You beat him clean, that means something. It truly does. And which is better long-term? Oh, meh. Working with Cena is never good for you long-term unless you're already an established top guy. Um, you know, so you would maybe argue beating Lesnar clean? I don't really know. I uh, simply recommend, if Sting versus Undertaker does not happen next year at WrestleMania, who would you like them to face? Uh, if they did have Sting wrestle next year at Mania, I would like it to be against one of a couple of individuals. It would either be uh, Seth Rollins or especially Bray Wyatt. I think the dynamics of that could work very, very well. I wouldn't want to see a return match between him and Triple H because then Triple H would retire and all oh, fuck that shit. Um, but other than that, really is no other appeal to me to seeing Sting at WrestleMania if he doesn't wrestle The Undertaker. And in terms of Undertaker at WrestleMania next year, if it's not Sting, I don't want to see it. And especially if they're going to book this shit that they did this year to where he didn't actually appear until WrestleMania. That shit was dumb, and it didn't fucking work. So it either needs to be Sting versus Undertaker at WrestleMania, or you keep Taker off the card entirely, and you find either Seth Rollins or, more notably, Bray Wyatt for a Sting to face off with. Yeah, maybe could throw Kevin Owens at the Undertaker thing. Maybe that would be the one I would kind of want to see. But again, the whole concept is... Part of the deal of ending the streak was so that you could move on from The Undertaker. What good does it do to end the streak and then keep bringing Taker back every year at WrestleMania? Anyways, Raz Ty asks, Now that Owens lost the NXT Championship, does he most likely win the U.S. title? 
you would think, you would hope that that would be the reason that they'd be doing it. Because you'd have a nice smooth transition right into him and Cesaro for that bill. And also, what do you think of the Miami Heat's offseason moves? Um, giving Dragic that much money, it's not a horrible contract. But I don't think it's a great one. You know, Wade's getting paid at least this year. You know, so that's good. Obviously, the drafting of Justice Winslow was a huge major win for them. Uh, to be able to get a talent like that to drop to them at 10th overall was a huge deal. Uh, what did they just bring in Amari Stoudemire for like a million and a half for one year? That was a really good gamble, in my opinion. Um, so I, I, I like some of what they've done. Uh, you know, they had Lou Aldeng opt in, which probably, frankly, surprised them a little bit. They're a playoff team next year, I think, beyond question. Antonio99085. Who would win in a political debate? Triple H, Hulk Hogan, and John Cena versus Bill O'Reilly, Sean Hannity, and Glenn Beck. You're comparing three bloviating, pontificating, pretentious, ignoramus bastards to three legends of wrestling politics. When you invoke who would win in a political debate and you put in there two vital members of the Breakfast Club, captained by Hulk Hogan, I don't know if anybody's beating that team. Anybody. Anybody. Hogan's team would destroy them in a debate. Call me King Trey One asks, is there any way possible that Rollins will beat Lesnar clean at Battleground? I think there's a possibility that he beats him at Battleground, but clean, I'm not buying that shit at all. I'm not even sure there's a possibility that Lesnar beats Rollins clean at Battleground. That could be wishy-washy, or they might not have either one of them beat the other. Mr. JJ1279, during the invasion angle, we know who WWE didn't sign, but why has nobody ever brought up Russo? Um... Because they didn't fucking care, I guess. I don't really know. Uh, wasn't it at one point in time that shortly after that, Russo did come in, but it was like for a small, small cup of coffee, like it was no time at all, and then he was back on, and then he was down to TNA? I could be wrong about that, but I thought that's what had happened. K Lightning Bolt, do you think that Sasha Banks is the best diva in all of WWE? I think she's one of the best. I don't know if I go so far to say that she's the best yet. What she's done down at the NXT level is very, very good, but that's the minor leagues. That's not the major leagues. Sorry, that's the truth. We'll see how she gets over. Let's see how she does once she gets to the main roster, and nothing is guaranteed. You know, and you look at it, it's kind of deceiving, too, because you could sit there and say that um, she's done all of this, but she gets time. They actually bother developing her character and her story. She has a lot more flexibility and freedom at the lower level than what she would at the higher level. How would she look if she was at that higher level? You know, I think in terms of the best diva right now in the company, even though her title reign has been brutally bad and it's going to continue probably for another couple of months, uh, I think right now in terms of balance, in terms of total picture, I have to give credit where credit is due. I personally think that Nikki Bella is the best of the divas. You know, a lot of dudes would like to bang her. Um, she has... A little personality, a little bit, a little bit, but she can go in the ring as well, um, have some character flexibility with her in terms of face and heel, and she can effectively work both sides of the fence. So I might have to go with Nikki Bella to give her credit at this point in time. Matt Mefe 2, what do you think WWE will do with Brock at WrestleMania 32? Um, Austin is a possibility. A very distinct possibility. Kevin Owens would be the other distinct possibility. At this moment, I think it would have to be one of those two. That's what I would think. Manny Feliciano, too. Obviously, cutting down Raw to two hours again is a plus. But should WWE split up Raw and SmackDown, too? Uh, you're right about the two-hour Raw would be a significant plus. But no way in hell should they split up Raw and SmackDown. No way. Even if Raw did go to two hours, they can't write one good show with the talent that they have. They most certainly wouldn't write, be able to effectively write two different shows, two different brands. It's just, no. We got away from that. We need to stay away from that. 
frankly, in a lot of ways, I wish SmackDown would go away. And I wish it was just one show on cable television every week. I wish it was just one show. Raw's three hours, Raw's three hours. It's a lot more tolerable if there's only one show to have to write. Colton 587. If Undertaker faces Sting at WrestleMania 32, should it main event? Um, if Taker's streak was still intact, I could make an argument, but I'm not sure how convincing of an argument it would be. Uh, there is risk associated with having Taker and Sting go out there together. You could trust in the greatness of the two, especially Taker, to lead the match and call the match and help Sting remember the spots and kind of hold his hand and walk him through it. Um, I'm not main inventing it, though. Semi-main, you know, second to last, perhaps. Maybe right in the middle of the show, be like that mid-show main event uh, that you know could potentially blow the house down, so you got to sit there and allow some time to have people decompress and build you back up to the real main event. You know, that might be what you have to do. I'm not main eventing it. I'm not putting it on last. Second to last, maybe, if the title is on the line in the main event. Um, I could I could maybe argue with that. But it's probably going to end up being mid-carding. If, if the show has eight matches, it's going to go on probably fourth or fifth. And that might be the right place on the card for that match. At least the way I see it at this moment. It's hard to envision at this point in time because we don't even know what's coming up for WrestleMania 32. We have some ideas, but we'll have to see how it all pieces together. And because Vince is an idiot, he's not going to want to do Sting versus Undertaker uh, because he's got both of the guys under the umbrella at the same time. Why the hell would you want to do that match? When you really don't have a lot of logical fits for both of these guys outside of it, you just got to do it at some point in time. You just have to. Uh, My Singh, you said you worked at Foot Locker. Do you consider yourself a sneakerhead, and what's your favorite sneaker of all time? Um, I'm not really a sneakerhead, no, not at all. In part, that comes out of working in the shoe business for four and a half years. I'm not a huge fan of shoes anymore. I got tired of seeing them, got tired of dealing with them. Uh, in terms of uh, shoes, uh, I think personally one of the most overrated shoes of all times are the Air Force Ones. Uh, Fucking people, oh, God, that's a whole other topic for a whole other time. Oh, but in terms of favorite shoes, the Jordan 3s, the 7s, obviously the patent leather 11s as well. Um, trying to think in terms of uh, one, one type of shoe I always used to like, especially as a work shoe, and it's for people that stand on their feet all day. They maybe need like an all-black shoe. It used to be the old Nike Air Max Solaces and Air Max TLs. Not those crappy 360s and 180s that they do now, but they used to be the Solaces and the TLs. I absolutely love those shoes. Absolutely love them. They were great work shoes, comfortable as shit, and allowed my feet to breathe because they were mesh. Uh, but my favorite shoe of all time was the old uh, Jumpman uh, Downtown Boots. It was the light brown suede. I wish I still had them. That was my favorite pair of anything of all time, I think. Uh, Kings of Kings VAR. King of Kings VAR, excuse me, ask the final question. Why doesn't WWE care about their product and fans? Well, I think they do. I don't, I don't think we could say that they don't care. I, I think there are other arguments that we can make that they don't know how to show they care. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to connect. They are on the wrong side of things when it comes to their product. But I don't think we could say that they don't care, because they do. They care in their own way, and they have to. They wouldn't be in the business if they didn't care. They just might not care about the things that we want them to care about in the way we want them to care about. So again, thanks to all of you that took to Twitter and tweeted your questions for this weekend's Q&A. The Facebook Q&A will be coming up soon, so stay tuned for that. Check out all the other content here on OTRS Central. And for those of you that check out my sports channel, Schleg Daddy TV, or haven't because you're not interested in sports, I'm now touching on some other topics because July, frankly, is a bit of a slower month as NBA free agency kind of tails off a little bit in terms of activity and interest. I'm touching on political and other topics. I just recently talked about the Confederate flag. We've got a video coming up about Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton as well. So if you're curious about that stuff, interested in that stuff, check out those videos on that channel as well. All right.